Okay, so to continue this discussion, if we uh, just repeat what we said on the previous slide, and again, I'm just using two re representative chromium-2 compounds. So remember, these are both D4 electron configurations. And the only thing that's changing is the, uh, is the nature of the ligand. And in this particular case, on the top, water is the ligand. And in the bottom case, cyanide is the ligand. And there's a big difference between them because water is considered a very weak field ligand. And cyanide is con considered to be one of the strongest um, ligand field, um, strongest field ligands got, that you can come across. So if you want to kind of think about this again, is if the pairing energy ends up being greater um, than uh, del O, that results in a weak field um, configuration and you get the high spin configuration. So remember in D4, the high spin configuration basically is giving you, in essence, four unpaired electrons. And then if del O is greater than the pairing energy from a strong field ligand like cyanide, you'll get a low spin configuration. And then if you remember how that, how that actually worked, it's still D4, except now um, there's only two unpaired electrons. So what you got from this is, is you can have chromium-2 in both molecules. And in one case, you can get effectively something that's much more magnetic than the other. And there's going to be other consequences to this too, because the, the energy splitting is going to actually determine the color that's observed from these compounds as well. Um, but let's kind of continue this discussion. Um, but this idea of the ligands dictating the magnitude of, of, uh, of del O is known as the spectrochemical series. And that's going to actually be a qualitative guide to let us determine weak versus strong field ligands. And then once we actually get into ligand field theory, we'll explain the, re the rationale for why some ligands are weak field and why others are strong field. But the, the point being is that, like I already said, is there's this relationship between the nature of the ligand and then and the energy gap of the of the of the final um, d orbitals that you'll get in the compound. And remember, the example here was we used exactly the same transition metal in exactly the same oxidation state, exactly the same electron configuration. And in one case, we got a high spin compound, and the other we got a low spin compound. And of course, as I already told you, the magnetic properties and the color um, are determined by that. Uh, magnitude of, of del O. So there's another subtle point that I wanted to bring up right now because it's very important to understanding um, the nature of, of the way that some of this is going to operate. So obviously we talk now that ligand has an effect and has an influence and the nature of the metal center has an influence, but the other thing that's really critical is the oxidation number or the oxidation state on the metal complex has a distinctive influence on the magnitude of, of, uh, of del O. So what I want you to see here is look at all of these metal ions here. So we're running everything here. Um, all of those metal ions are first row uh, transition metals, but they're all in the two plus oxidation state. And given the fact that they're all in the two plus oxidation state means that they're kind of very similar in their Lewis acid behavior. So they'll, they'll basically have bonding with um, incoming ligands um, that are approximately the same strength. So if you made a water compound or, or a, an agua compound with each of these, they would have very similar uh, crystal field stabilization energies, or I should say crystal field. Uh, Splittings, del O. And the, um, the net result of this is, is notice that all of these values are in wave numbers, but they're all kind of within the ballpark of, of being very similar. So then see what happens. And, and the ones that you know, really matter are going to be obviously covered in, in the ones where you can actually have a measurement between the two different sides. So 
you increase the oxidation number now to um, three plus. What does that do? Well, we know that that makes a stronger Lewis acid, um, but then what it also does is because it's a stronger Lewis acid, it tends to contract um, all of the orbitals a bit, but the other influence it has is it'll make stronger bonds with incoming ligands. So the bond strength in these compounds is gonna be larger than the ones in the two plus oxidation state. And that's really revealed here. So you see that the, the value of del O practically doubles, not quite, but is close to double by just increasing the oxidation number by one. And if you continue to do that and increase these oxidation numbers again, these numbers here would also you know, continue to increase. So that again is the magnitude of del O is influenced by the oxidation number. And then what I also want everybody to kind of pay attention to is that the pairing energies um, that you're also observing in all of these configurations are all kind of illustrated here. But notice the only time you care about pairing energy is when you go effectively from a D4 to a D7 configuration. This is where you have this distinction between high spin and low spin. In the rest of the configurations, you're just going to write the electrons as the best as you can. And no matter what you do in D1 to D3, they're all going to just be spread out in the different D orbitals. And then again, once you, once you basically fill the other orbitals, the D8 to D10 configurations really won't change either. So they're always going to just maximize spin multiplicity. But in the end, um, you can't really distinguish high spin and low spin. Um, they're effectively the same.